Talk a little bit about the Tularosa black on whites. This is part of the greater Cibola black on white pottery tradition. Uh, the area we're talking about is the upper Little Colorado region, that river drainage, east central Arizona, a little bit into New Mexico. And this is Tularosa black and white. This is between AD 1200 and 1300. It evolved out of snowflake black on white and into Pinedale black on white. And I'll show you those later on. Tularosa was very, very, very abundantly produced and widely traded, uh, 12 to 1300 AD, very distinctive pottery type. There are a lot of physical form features that are very distinctive to the type, and I want to show you a couple. One is these lugs, this little canteen. This is just like you'd use a water bottle. They have a strap on it, you carry it out in the field. And these lugs are very often little doggy effigies, bird effigies. Uh, there's some little bird tracks around the top of that little canteen. But these lugs, here's a twisted handle. You see this a lot. But the clay's been twisted. Uh, sometimes that will be like a little uh, doggy shape. The forms are really globular. The jars are really, really round. Uh, there's no shoulder of any kind on them. They have this raised areola around the opening. A lot of times, not always, a lot of times. This one doesn't have it. This one doesn't have it. This one does. Raised areola. A very good example. Look at that one. <laughs> raised areola. You see that a lot. Now I want to talk about oh, the dippers too. Beautiful. So can you imagine painting that? Holy cow. Now you often see these, these holes in the side this, so they don't blow up when you fire them. But a lot of times these dippers in the handle, they, in the handle they will have a, uh, a little stone or something that makes a rattling noise. Here's one with a rattle. Got a rattle in there. I often wonder if that's so that the lady of the house knows when somebody's dipping into something because you can hear the rattle go off. We don't see as many symbols, not meaningful symbols, on Tularosa as we do on the later material. Remember, this terminated right around 1300. After 1300, we see more aggressive use of symbols with meaning. A lot of the Tularosa material are really just, you know, pretty patterns, nice designs, interlocked terraced units, ripple pattern. You see that in Pinedale later on, and this is a meaningful unit. There's an in prehistory. This is often thought to be refracted sunlight. Uh, which one? Yeah, that one, that's right. And then there's the Milky Way, the starry sky, pathway of the warrior twins, brother elder, brother younger. And there are some other units. There's some clouds on this. I'll just show you this one piece. If you're a potter, you know what happened to this. That's the top of an oya, and it's obviously slumped probably from an over-firing. And if you're a potter, you probably had that happen. I've had it happen, where the, it just go, gets too hot. This was probably in the center of the pyre when they fired a, a large number of vessels. Now this is a good example of something that was definitely made pretty much right where you found it. When we excavated this site, this is a pretty solid evidence of that the site was where they made the pottery. Because you're certainly not going to try to trade that ruined vessel out uh, farther away from where you made it. Tularosa black on white, AD 1200 to 1300. Uh, it's sort of the middle phase of the black and white. You have reserves and snowflakes, then Tularosa, then Pinedale.